Good morning, Atomic Church. Happy Easter morning. We're so glad you're joining us today. And listen, maybe you've never been here with us during one of these uh, streaming services, but we're really glad you're here as well. And we've got a great day in store here for you and a great message for you today. And uh, what we want to do first is we want to tell um, our friends here at Citizen Church how much we appreciate them. They have been so uh, gracious with us and offering us the opportunity to come here, and they've got all their cameras and their crews and their sound team here with us right now, helping us produce this message for Easter. So thank you very much, Pastor Dustin and Mandy and Pastor Galen and Kay. We really do appreciate you guys. We love y'all so much. And uh, as you're sowing into Atomic Church, we know that you're sowing into the kingdom of God. So Citizen Church, you're participating in what God is doing right here in Rio Rancho, and we appreciate you guys very, very much. And thank you for what you're doing to build the kingdom of God. And um, something we want to do right now at this point of our service, we want to go ahead and take time to receive our tithes and our offerings. And uh, if you're part of Atomic Church, you know that we talk to you guys about this pretty much every Sunday. We talk to you about it often. And we like to consider this a time not that we have to do something or that we have to give to the church, but this is an opportunity that we take to actually, um, an opportunity to get to give to the church and into the kingdom of God and build God's kingdom. And there's a couple verses here I want to go over with you just real, real quick. And something that's been on us as a church, on my wife and I, Pastor Don and I personally, is that during this time with the coronavirus going on, it's not a time that we should actually draw back, but on the contrary, this is a time that we should press forward with everything that we're doing to build his kingdom. So we actually are not holding back with our tithes and our offerings, but we're actually uh, moving forward and trying to increase during this time of what we're sowing, and there's a reason for that. In the Bible, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, the Bible says this, do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Don't be deceived because God's not mocked that whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Skip down a verse there, verse nine. And here's where we want to encourage you today and that we're encouraged by the word of God. And let us not grow weary while doing good. So it's time to not grow weary. Even in the middle of the tough times, we're not gonna grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So today, as you're practicing what the Word tells us to do with your giving, your tithes and your offerings, as you practice that and that discipline, and, and you do it from a grateful heart, as you're doing that, don't grow weary while well doing. This is a time for us not to draw back, but to go ahead and press forward with our giving into the kingdom of God and building his kingdom. And as you do that, you can trust God's word that as you sow, you're going to reap. So today, as you give uh, into Atomic Church, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can do that by going to atomicchurch.com. You can go to the give button. Uh, and also, you can text to give and very simply go on your phone, text this phone number, and then put the phone, or excuse me, the amount that you want to give today uh, right there in the memo line. You can text to give to area code 505-278-5355. So as you do this today, listen, we love you guys. Thank you for your generosity. And we are building God's kingdom, you know, one dollar at a time. And I, I can tell you that what we're doing at Atomic Church is impacting lives of people around the earth. Not only are we reaching our own community, our own state, but even our own nation. And we, uh, as a church, we tithe. We give 10% of everything that comes into the church. We take that and we divide that up to four ministries. We divide it out every month. We send a tithe check. So as a church, we practice what we preach. We send that out. And those ministries are reaching all around the world, getting people saved in different parts of the country and around the world. And as we participate with those four ministries, we are participating in what God is doing, building his kingdom. So thank you for what you do. Thank you for your generosity. I want to pray over the tithes and offerings right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give into your kingdom, to build your kingdom, to partner with what you're doing right here in Rio Rancho, right here in the Albuquerque metroplex area, right here in New Mexico, in our country and around the world. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. We don't do this 
begrudgingly or out of necessity, but we are, have a cheerful heart and we do it with a grateful heart. Thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom and to participate with what you're doing in the earth today. Father, our trust is in you in every area. Father, I thank you that every single seed that's being sown today, God, Lord, that it will cause a harvest to come into the lives of those that are able to give today. We ask you, Father God, if there's somebody out there that's listening right now that wants to give, but they're not able to, we'd ask you to bless them, Father God, in a way that next time we come together, they'll be able to, uh, to participate. So, Father, we thank you for this great opportunity to give into your kingdom. We trust you with even with our finances in all of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you guys for what you're doing. And I want to go ahead and uh, jump right into our confession today, something we do every week at Atomic Church. And if you want to stand with us like we normally do, go ahead and stand up. Say this like you mean it. Let's all say it together. Say it with me. Say, I'm here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open and my mind is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life because Jesus lives in me. Praise God, yes he does, he lives on the inside of us and we are here on purpose and with a purpose. And if you're watching today, listen, it's not a mistake that you're here listening to what's going on today. God's gonna speak to your heart today. And we believe that today is gonna be a day for you that God's gonna move into your life and change your situation that you're currently in. And I like to start each message with a little small joke. And since it's Easter, I have an Easter joke. And are you ready? All right. I'll say it, I'll say it again today that... Um, it's always awesome when you get the mic because in, in, in you get the stage. This is pretty cool, right? This is pretty, pretty awesome that I get the responsibility and the opportunity to do this. So I get to tell a joke and I get to, you know, use my humor and something I think that's funny. And then, you know, I don't know if you guys like it or not, but I get to do it. So it's always good to me. So here we go. It's going to be quick. Where does the Easter Bunny get his eggs? It's easy. From eggplants. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right, you guys, this is an interesting message today, um, and I want to kind of just set this up by telling you that, um, I, you know, I pray on a continual basis, and I ask God, Lord, what do you want for me to say to the people? And, and my thought and my prayer is this, and, and I do it co really con uh, constantly on a consistent basis. I'm saying, God, I don't want to tell them what's on my mind. I don't want to share my heart with them. I don't want to uh, tell them what I'm going through so that they can try to connect with that. I don't want to do that. What I want to do, God, is I want to hear from you, and, and I just simply want to yield to you, God, and hear what you want for me to say to them, and I just want to be used as the messenger boy for you, God. So I pray all the time, God, not my will be done as I preach the word to your people today. And I want to tell you this, friend, if you're listening to us right now, you're not here by accident. He literally has, uh, like, from eternity known that today was going to happen. And he has planned for you to tune in right now. And listen, you may even be listening to this a day after Easter or a week after Easter or a month after Easter, but God's plan was that you would come across this message right at the right time so that he could speak to your heart. And I believe today that I have received a word from God for you that can impact your life from God, not from the preacher, but from God, using a man just to simply speak what God has spoken to me to tell you. So I seek God continually asking him, what do you want me to tell them, Father? What do you want me to say to them um, that you're wanting to communicate to them where it's not me doing it, but it's actually you doing the talking. And the last couple of weeks I've been seeking him for, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people on Easter Sunday? What is it that you want me to say? And um, I haven't really been able to get clarity on what to talk about today. It's very interesting. Maybe some of you guys have heard the, the term writer's block writer's block, where you're trying to, you know, you have to get something down on paper, you need to get a thought down, you need to get the idea down, and it's like you just can't figure out what it is you're wanting to say or how to say it. And I've been experiencing that for the last couple weeks with today's message. And I actually got, I'm telling you this for a reason. Last night, I'm sitting there, 
at 7.30, I have listened to the last five years of my own Easter sermons. I'm going, maybe I can preach one of those again because I don't know what to do. I'm going, I'm listening to uh, some of my, our local pastors, some nationally known pastors. I'm listening to their sermons. I'm reading some sermons. I'm seeking God. I'm going, God, what do you want me to say today? And last night at 8 o'clock, I still don't know. And by the way, right now it's 10 o'clock in the morning. So 14 hours ago, I didn't have a clue still what I was going to talk to you about today. And I finally got up and I said, Pastor Don, I, I'm just going to go for a walk. Man, I, I don't know, you know. And I, and I went, I got my, my jacket on, went outside. I'm walking. I'm walking. And I said, okay, here I am again, God, because I've been here before. Here I am again, God, and you know, I refuse to go talk to people about what I want to say to them. I'm refusing God to go tell the people to, on tomorrow morning, which is now. I'm refusing God to do whatever it is I want to do. You're going to have to tell me what you want for me to say to them. I'm not going to do, I'm just going to go, I, don't, I may not show up if I have to. I'm not going to go just go give them my ideas. And I'm talking to God like this. I'm going, Lord, you got to tell me what you want me to say. See, th this I'm not surrendered to my will. I'm not surrendered to my calling. I'm surrendered to your will and to your calling in my life. I just want to be used by you, God, to do whatever it is you want to do. I'm in on that. That's something I know that I can do because I go beyond myself and let you have your way, and then you talk to them through me. See, I don't think that, uh, for me personally, I don't ever want to try to give the message of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I don't ever want to try to share that in a way that is going to be self-centered and not Christ-centered. I need to hear from God. So anyway, let me, I'm sorry, let me, let me just kind of get going here and get through what I'm trying to say. Long story short, I'm walking, and this is so cool when this happens. And some of you will know what I'm talking about, and some of you may have never experienced this. But see, I have this serious relationship going with God. I really do. I've got like a personal relationship going with him. And I'm talking to him, I'm saying, man, come on. Where are you at? Uh, you know, you got to show up. You got to say something to me somewhere. And just like snapping your fingers, all of a sudden, I had like a download in me, right? Just like hitting, you know, your download button on your computer. It's just like all of a sudden, man, all this rush of information came into my mind. And, and, and I'm realizing it's from God. I know who it was speaking to my heart. You may think, dude, whatever, bro. You're crazy, you know? That's pretty religious right there. Well, that's okay for you to say that, but here's the deal. I've been living for 25 years seeking God like this, and I've had 25 years of experience of God downloading me on stuff. And so you can call me crazy. I had a friend used to say it like this. You might call me a nut, but here's the deal. I am screwed on the right bolt, so don't mess with me now. So anyway, God downloaded me last night, and I've got this word for you today. And let me just tell you what he told me. It was pretty simple. I'm just going to try to follow what he told me to say to you today. He said, tell them that I love them and tell them my story. Then tell them your story and tell them I want them to know me like you do. And then tell them how they can do it. So, over the next few minutes, here's what we're going to talk about and what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to let you know that, number one, God loves you. Number two, I'm going to tell you my story. Number three, I'm here to tell you today that he wants to have a relationship with you like he does with me. And then I'm also going to let you know this when we're done, how you can get into that relationship. So, number one, this is pretty cool, right? I'm telling you, all this stuff came to me within moments. And I believe that there's going to be some of you today that are listening that are going to hear from God for yourself. I believe this is going to be a day of change for you. This is Easter 2020, and there's a reason that we're celebrating this Easter. We're going to talk about that. God is able and willing to meet you right where you're at. It's not going to be too hard for him. And he's willing to come into a relationship with you personally. 
and change your life. He's willing to do that. There's a certain love that the Bible talks about that's called agape love. Point number one is that God loves you with agape love. And the love that God loves you with is a love that is unconditional. It's not based on how good you are, and it's not based on how bad you are. The love of God is a love that is not natural. It's actually a supernatural love. It's a love that loves the unlovable. It's a love that suffers long with us. It's a love that is patient with us. It's a love that is kind. It's a love that doesn't have to have its way. It's a love that forgives and releases and restores. God's love is a love not like a natural human love, but God's love is a love, this is interesting, let me say it to you like this. The Bible says that God is love. And that this love of God, this perfect love, the love of God, whenever a person is willing to receive the love of God, here's what happens, it's an awesome thing, and it applies to where we're at today with the coronavirus going on. This perfect love will actually cast out fear. It casts out fear. Man, that is something. If you could receive enough love from God Almighty, if somehow you could connect with him, and you could sense his perfect love, his pure love that's gonna love you. This is what's cool about this. It doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter if you're in the middle of something you shouldn't be doing, like right this minute. If you're right trapped in the middle of something that you know you don't wanna be in, you know that God doesn't really want you there, even in the middle of that, he loves you exactly the same as he loves the perfect saint person that's out there walking around. That's an amazing love. And that love, the love of God that we can receive from him, if we're willing to receive it, will actually cast out all fear, all fear. And right now today, with the coronavirus going on, there's a lot of fear in the earth. And I thank God that I found the answer to fear in my life. And so, God wants me to tell you today, regardless of where you're at or what you're doing, he loves you. And his love's not gonna change. The second thing he told me to t tell you was his story. He said, tell him that I love him and tell him my story. And I'm just gonna read some notes I wrote down uh, late last night. This is the story that God wants you to hear today. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and when they did that, it separated them from God. When they did that, it actually separated all of mankind from God. Before they sinned, God actually was with them. He'd go visit with them. He'd go hang out with them in the garden every day, and that garden was a paradise. It was what God had planned, to be in fellowship with man, to have a relationship on a daily basis with man. And when Adam and Eve sinned, literally, it's, it's an amazing thing that that sin separated them from God. A bit later, Abraham came along, and God made a covenant agreement with Abraham. And see, Abraham realized that this God that we're talking about today was a God of abundance. He was a God that um, was a loving God, and he was a God that would do whatever he said he would do. He'd always deliver on his promise. So Abraham trusted God and put faith in God, and he put so much faith in God that God said, you know what, Abraham, I'm gonna cut a covenant with you, and here's the deal. We're gonna come into this covenant, and everything that I am, everything that I have, Abraham, all the provision of my, of, of my realm, I'm, I'm the, the, the beginning and I am the end. I always was God, I'm always gonna be God. I'm the one that spoke into, uh, in, into the realm out there, and I said, let there be light, and there was light. I'm the one, Abraham, that created everything that is creation that you know. And here's the deal, because you have faith in me and you believe in me and you trust in me, Abraham, here's the deal. I'm gonna make a covenant with you, and here's what covenant does. Covenant says, you know what? Everything that I am and everything that I have and all I'm ever gonna be, I'm gonna give it to you. And in return, 
On the other side, the other person on the other side of the covenant says, you know what, everything that I have, everything that I am, everything that I'll ever have, I'm going to give it to you. And we're going to come into covenant as one. That's what covenant does. And God made covenant with Abraham and promised Abraham all these wonderful blessings that would happen in the earth, that he was going to multiply him. And he came with all these promises to Abraham and said, Abraham, because we're coming into covenant, these are your promises. Well, there's a reason I'm saying that. We'll come back to that here in a few minutes. Just telling you his story right now. There was an issue, though, that mankind had, and man had an issue, a problem. Here's what his problem was. God made a set of laws, and man was not able to keep the laws of God. You guys remember probably in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments, the laws. There were other laws established as well, but the problem was that mankind, we humans, we couldn't do it all. So what system was set up at the time was that man would bring sacrifices to the temple. He'd bring his sacrifice in and give it to the high priest. Man didn't have a relationship with God personally. He had to go to the high priest, and the high priest would take that sacrifice back into the, into the back of the temple, into the Holy of Holies where the presence of God was. And he'd sacrifice that sacrifice for that man or woman so that they could be forgiven of their sins until they had to come back next year and do it again because they were going to break the law, and they're going to have to have another sacrifice. And it was a real vicious cycle of doing these sacrifices, trying to obey God and missing all the time. At that time, man did not have a personal relationship with God. He only had a relationship with the priest. See, man was separated from God because of their sins. All of mankind, because of what Adam and Eve did, was found guilty of breaking God's laws. And here's the deal. Because they were guilty, they actually needed some way to be saved from the penalty that was due to them. The penalty that was due to them was due to the sin that they committed. They actually needed somebody to come save them from the penalty due to them. Awesome God that he is provided a way. He had prophesied, there'd been prophecy about the Messiah that was gonna come, that was gonna save the people from their sins. And because God loved the people in the earth so much that he created, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the earth. Let me just read, many of you guys will know this verse, but let me just read this to you. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but would have everlasting life. And the Son of God has a name, and his name is Jesus. Jesus said it like this when he came into the earth. He had a mission, he had a goal to accomplish, and here's what he said. He said that I have come to seek and to save the lost. I've come to seek and save the lost. Well, that's a pretty bold statement, to seek and save the lost. While Jesus was on the earth, he lived a sinless life. He was full of love and mercy and goodness. He healed the sick. He opened the blind eyes. He made the lame walk. Praise God. He opened deaf ears, and he cast evil spirits out of people while he walked on the earth. He came for the ones that were broken, people like me, and people that were bound up, people like me. And he healed them, and he set them free. All the miracles in the life of Jesus are all documented in the Bible, and here's the deal. There were multitudes of eyewitnesses that testified of who he was. Jesus came and he fulfilled all of the Old Testament prophecies of who the Messiah would be and what he would do. Jesus would have to be made a sacrifice 
to fulfill the prophecy. He'd have to be made a sacrifice for all of mankind and take the penalty that was due to all of us upon himself and be crucified upon a cross and shed his blood and be a once and for all sacrifice so that mankind could be forgiven and reconciled to God. And God had originally intended for this to happen and for all of prophecy to be fulfilled. Here's what's cool. Jesus Christ did it all perfectly. He fulfilled all prophecy when he came to the earth. Every word that was spoken by the prophets of old of who he would be, what he would do, how he would roll on the earth, every single bit of that, he did it all perfectly. He didn't miss anything. I'm just telling you his story right now. That's what he told me to tell you, tell you his story. He did it all perfectly, and he did not leave one prophecy unfulfilled, and he did not leave one spoken word of God undone or unfinished. Jesus Christ fulfilled every requirement made by God. Listen, to sacrifice himself for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins and that we could come into a father-son or father-daughter relationship with God Almighty and that we could be assured of eternal life. That's why he came. He did it all. He accomplished his mission. There was one more requirement that he had to meet, though. He was taken down. Once he died on that cross, he was taken down from the cross and buried in a tomb for three days. On the third day, he rose from the grave. The resurrection is the difference maker for the Christian. It's the difference maker. That's why we're celebrating Easter today. Another term we hear used for Easter is Resurrection Sunday. So we're celebrating this resurrection, and it's the difference maker. There are many so-called gods in the earth, but there is only one Jesus who has, raised, has been raised from the grave. He is currently seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven, and that right hand represents the place of authority, all prophecy, and listen, there's just a little bit more here. All prophecy will be fulfilled one day. Not quite done yet. Will be fulfilled one day. Now listen, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. It's the place of authority. In other words, he's seated today uh, in a place of rest, in a place of peace. He's seated today at the right hand of the Father, and he's seated as the king of all kings. He's seated as the place of authority, he's the Lord of all lords. All little gods that people make in their life here on the earth, all of those little gods, Jesus Christ is seated as the big God in the place of authority. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the king of all kings. And God himself is well pleased with the son right now. He's sitting in the place of authority. And there's gonna come a day when prophecy will be fulfilled, when Jesus Christ, he'll actually stand up. This day's coming. Woo. He's going to stand up in heaven, and he's going to summon all of the angels of heaven. He's going to say, Gabriel, Michael, you warring angels, he's just going to stand up, and they're going to know what day it is. This day has been prepared before the foundations of the earth. There's going to come a day that he's going to stand up, he's going to gather all of heaven with him, and he's going to, he's going to make a move, and he's going to split the sky wide open here on earth. He's going to come a second time into the earth, except this time he's not coming as a baby in a manger. On the contrary, he's going to lead the army of heaven into the earth to gather up his church. This is going to be an awesome day. So that's his story. The third thing he told me to talk to you about is my story. I'm going to try to give you the short version. Here it is. I started drinking at about 10 years old, started smoking dope at about 11 years old. Then my dad died a couple years later as a young teenage boy. And uh, 
I wasn't doing very good. And from within, here's what happened to me. I thought I knew more than anybody else. And by the way, I spent the next 20 to 25 years of my life being the guy I'm getting ready to tell you about. I spent the next 25 years thinking that nobody could tell me anything. I was rebellious against authority in my life deep on the inside. My rebellion was felt by everybody around me. If you thought you were gonna tell me to do something, that wasn't gonna happen, and I was always ready to fight about it. I was angry. Nobody's gonna tell me what to do. I'm gonna do my thing. I'm my own man. Nobody's gonna tell me anything about anything. I'm gonna make my own way. If it's gonna be, it's gonna be up to me. That's what I thought. Nobody was gonna tell me what to do. I did do things my way. By living that way, by thinking that way, by operating that way, what I found myself after 25 years of doing this, being consumed because I was gonna do what I was gonna do and nobody's gonna tell me what I was gonna do by being consumed with alcohol, by being consumed by drugs, by being consumed with pornography, by being consumed with whatever it was that I wanted that I wanted to try to make me feel good for the day, 25 years later, it's like I had a wake-up call, and I'm going, oh, my goodness. Is this it? Is this it? Can this possibly be all there is to this life? I had an aha moment, and I thought, you know what? There's got to be a better way. I was so worn out. I was tired. I knew that something had to change in my life. So after 25 years of the drugs and the alcohol and the pornography, and it was probably in my, about my mid-30s, I asked God finally to take over, and everything at that point when I did that began to change. Today, I'm definitely not who I want to be because I don't have it all figured out, but here's something that I'm sure of now 25 years later, that I'm absolutely not who I used to be. I may not be who I want to be, but I'm definitely not who I used to be. And here's the deal. I have great hope that I'm going to keep growing, and I'm going to keep changing, and my attitudes are going to keep changing, and God is going to keep working with me. And, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to hopefully, I'm getting ready to turn 60 years old next time I have a birthday. And uh, I believe I'm going to live to at least 100. So I've got approximately 41 more years to go, at least. And I'm believing that I'm gonna, over the next 41 years, because of the promises of God and my faith in God and my trust in him, and I'm gonna do whatever he's telling me to do. I'm believing this. I'm believing that at about 100 years old, I'm gonna be on fire for God. I'm gonna be consumed with the fire of God. I'm gonna be, and I'm using this word, and now listen, let me explain this to you. I'm using the word fire. I'm gonna be on fire for God. I'm gonna be somebody walking through the earth that's experienced so much love of God, that's been in such a relationship with God for so long now, that I'm gonna be walking through the earth at a 100-year-old man, and there's gonna be something about me that you get close to me, you're gonna get some Jesus on you. That's my belief. I'm gonna keep pressing into that, so that's my story. The fourth thing he told me to tell you was he wants you to know him like I do. In other words, God wants a personal relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you that you can go to him and you can talk to him and he will talk back to you. Just like if I'm sitting at the dinner table and it's Pastor Don and I just sitting there, just the two of us, some of my favorite times in life, just her and I visiting. Nobody else, the phones are off, everything's away, and we're just talking. He wants a relationship with you like that. He wants a relationship with you that whenever you have a problem, you take it to him. And he helps you, and he gives you wisdom. He gives you his wisdom. He helps open up your eyes where you can see how to solve problems in your life. And you begin to see things differently because you're in relationship with the one that created you. That's how he meant for it to be from the beginning. He wants to be to you like he is to me. Remember me telling you my story? My daddy died when I was 13. And in the last 25 years through my 
developing my relationship and going after God and going, God, I gotta find you. I need to hear from you, God. I want you, God. I want a relationship with you, God. I believe in you, God. I need you to speak to my heart. I need to hear from you. I can't do this alone. I need help. By me doing that for 25 years now, I can tell you that I'm standing here today in front of you this Easter Sunday, a man that has a father-son relationship with my God. And let me say this to you, because I know my daddy, because I love my daddy, and I know my daddy loves me because we know each other. Because of that relationship that I have, I'm standing before you now, a man that has been completely changed by the love of God, by the relationship that I have with him. And I'm standing here before you today, a man that used to be not so nice at all. Now I'm standing before you, a pretty nice guy. It's amazing what God will do in your life if you allow him in, the relationship. He'll change your life. The father-son relationship that I have with him is unbelievable. I no longer feel like in my life, like I did for 20-something years as I did all the drugs and the alcohol, that I was fatherless. Now all of a sudden, I'm no longer, I'm no longer a man that is without a father, but now I have a father that loves me, that cares for me. He's promised me that he's not gonna leave me or forsake me. I'm here to tell you today, friend, that relationship, because he just told me to tell you that. Number four, he wants you to know him like I do. God wants you to know him the same way that I do, as your father. Number five, so how can you do it? How do you do that? How do you get in that relationship? How can he become your father? I'm glad you asked. Here we go. This is what's so cool about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and why we're celebrating Easter. There's only one way that you can come into relationship with God the Father, and it's through the Son, Jesus Christ. There's no other God. There's no other options. You say, well, that's kind of closed-minded, isn't it? Look, I'm not making this up. I'm not trying to come up with some kind of a theory. I'm not trying to come up with some kind of a quote-unquote theology. I'm simply saying to you today that there is one way to God Almighty, and it's not through Buddha. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through some sun god. It's not through Mother Earth. It's not through some saint. It's not through Mary. It's through one and one only, and his name is Jesus Christ. In fact, listen to what Jesus said. By the way, he is the Messiah. He is the one that fulfilled all scripture. He is the one, the only one, that has fulfilled all prophecy of old. Perfectly. Jesus said this in John 14, 6. I am the way. Not a way. I am the way. The truth and the life, no one, no one, listen to me, friend, no one comes to the Father except through me. You cannot get to God except you go through Jesus Christ. You may have tried other ways. Other ways may be attractive to you. And I can tell you this right now, outside of a relationship with Jesus Christ, there is no other way to get to God. That sounds kind of harsh, Pastor Mark. Maybe. I didn't make this up. This is the way God did it. Acts 4.12 says this. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There's only one name. His name is Jesus, by which we must be saved. John eleven twenty five 25 says this. Jesus said to her, I am, I love this, happy Easter. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. In other words, Jesus Christ said it like this. Because I have risen from the grave, if you believe in me, 
When your body gives out, you may die physically, but you're gonna live forever with me in heaven, with the Father. Eternal salvation through Christ and Christ alone. How would you do that? How would you have eternal salvation through Christ? You gotta put your trust in Christ and Christ alone. You gotta put your trust, your, your, your trust that what he did at Calvary, when he went to the cross, he allowed them to beat him to the point of death. They hung him on the cross until death. They buried him, and then on the third day he rose from the grave. If you can believe that, and that he did all that for you, and that he loves you, and that he's the son of God, you can be saved. In fact, in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says that for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Another verse for you, Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What do you mean saved? Quick definition. When we come to Christ, we say, God, here's the deal. I've sinned, I've messed it, I've missed it, and I've messed it up, and I'm gonna ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Save me, God, from the punishment that I know is due to me because I have not done things your way. I'm asking you to forgive me, and by faith we receive that forgiveness from God, and we say, Lord, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna let you have full rule, full reign in my life. I'm gonna give you everything that I have. I'm gonna come into covenant with you, God, because you're, you've made a way for me to have direct relationship with God. I no longer have to go to the priest, but I get to come straight to you, God, through your son, Jesus Christ. And you say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be a disciple of yours. I'm gonna do things your way and do life your way. That's how we do it. God has raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus Christ lives forevermore. The same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the grave lives on the inside of every follower of Christ. The same power that raised Christ from the dead lives on the inside of me. If you're a born-again believer, if you're a Christ follower, if you've committed your life to God through the Son, Jesus Christ, guess what? The same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead lives on the inside of you. If you're not a Christ follower, that same power does not live on the inside of you. But today, you can make a decision to become a Christ follower. You'll have that resurrection power come live on the inside of you, and you'll find out that things that have been dead in your life, God will begin to breathe his life, giving power, the resurrection power into these issues in your life, into the issues where I couldn't control it and my life was out of control, I was spinning out of control, the drugs had a hold of me, the alcohol had a hold of me, I was out of control, I was spinning out of control, I allowed God to come in and guess what? He began to repair me from the inside out with his resurrection power. He took something that was dying and dead on the inside of me and brought life to me again. Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, and he's gonna return to the earth for a second time. He's coming back again. The Bible says that when that happens that every knee will bow. Every tongue's gonna confess that he's Lord. In other words, everyone in the earth is gonna go, OMG, literally. They're gonna go, Oh, man, it's really him. It's all really true. It's all really going down like the Bible says it was gonna go down. The Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue's gonna confess, you're Lord. It's gonna be an awesome time. It's gonna be an awesome time. Here's what's crazy. What I'm saying to you today is true whether you believe it or not. In the next couple moments, I'm gonna ask you a question that's gonna kinda call you out on the carpet. I've spoken some good truth to you today. According to the word of God, I've given you scripture out of the word of God. This is not my opinion, this is the word of God I'm giving you today. So here in a few minutes, I'm gonna ask you if you're ready to believe it or not. And so you're gonna have to make the decision yourself if you decide today to believe, 
You're going to come into relationship with him. I'll show you how to do it. If you decide you're not going to today and you're going to stay stubborn and you're going to stay tight and you're going to do it your way and nobody's going to tell you what to do and nobody's going to pressure you into anything, if you're going to stay there, you'll have what you have. As a Christian today, everything I've told you about is why we celebrate today, Easter. We're so excited because we know that God is who he says he is, that Christ is who he says he is, and that he's done what he said he's going to do. We know it's all true today, and today is literally for the church, for the Christians in the earth. This is a victory lap day for us. It's like today we, we run around and we celebrate. Jesus Christ has risen from the grave, and all of us have been made right with God through the blood that, that Jesus shed upon the cross through the blood and then through the death and through the burial and through the resurrection, it's all true. And so that's why we're so happy today. It's Easter. We're celebrating because the victory has been won for us. And friend, I'm here to tell you and appeal to you, the victory has been won for you also. Are you willing to receive it is the only question. God's will is this. The Bible says it. His will is that. None should perish. That includes you. That none should perish. So here's my question for you today. Are you ready? You say, are you ready for what? Are you ready to meet Jesus Christ face to face? See, because here's the issue. The Bible tells us that whether it's when he comes back to the earth for his second coming or whether it's going to be the time that we die a natural death here on the earth, there's going to come a day that we're all going to meet him face to face, and we're all going to stand before him and give an account of our lives. It's what the Bible tells, tells us. It's what it states. So the question is for you today, are you ready? If you don't know the answer to that question, Today's the perfect day for you to make a commitment to him, surrender your heart to him, give your life to him, and listen, you can be assured that you'll be ready for that day. I'm giving you some good news. This is the great Easter message right here that I'm giving to you right now. No matter what's going on in your life, no matter what you've done, no matter what condition you're in right now, God loves you. He wants you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to save you from your sins. He wants to write your name in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. He wants to guarantee heaven for you. He wants to come into a relationship with you that will not only last for a couple days or weeks or months, but a relationship with you that will last forever, for eternity. He wants that. He wants it so bad. He wanted it so bad that he sent Jesus Christ into the earth to die for you and me, that we could have this opportunity. So if you're listening today and you're watching today and you say, you know what, Pastor Mark, I know I need to get it right with God and I know I've been doing it my way and I know that I've been stubborn and I know that nobody's gonna tell me what to do but I'm, I'm tired of that and it's not getting me anywhere in life and I'm not satisfied with that, you can be satisfied with Christ today. So I wanna lead you in a prayer. If you're ready in your life to commit your heart to Christ and say, God, I'm ready for the change. I'm ready to make you the Lord of my life. I'm ready for, to be forgiven of all my sins and I'm ready to have my name written in the Lamb's book of life. If that's you, I wanna pray for you. It's very simple, the prayer I'm gonna lead you in. And all you're gonna do is ask God to forgive you, receive him as your Lord and your Savior and commit your heart to him and commit your life to him and call on his name, and he'll save you right now. This will be your day of change in your life. It's the greatest day of my life was when I finally gave in. I gave my heart to Christ. It changed everything for me, and he's not a respecter of persons. What he's did for me, he'll do for you. So if that's you, I want to pray for you, friend. If you will do this, I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and just say the prayer after me. I'm going to go slow, and you can repeat the prayer after me. And As you say this, listen, don't just say it shallow-hearted. If this is your time, say it like you mean it. Say it from your heart. Mean it with all that you have. And today, God will come to you and save you right where you're at. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes and just say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I've messed up. 
and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And today, Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I surrender my heart, my mind, my body, and my life to you. Heavenly Father, I thank you that today I'm saved. And I thank you that today my name has been written in your book and I have eternal salvation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen and amen. That's awesome. If you prayed that prayer, listen, we want to connect with you, and we're really, really happy for you. It's the best decision you've ever made. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to go to atomicchurch.com. Scroll down towards the bottom there. You'll find a place that you can send us a note. Let us know what you prayed today. Let us know who you are and what's going on in your life. We want to send you some free material um, that will talk to you about the decision you've made today. And uh, listen, and, and once you have done that, Find yourself, maybe if you're in the Albuquerque or the um, Rio Rancho area, we'd love to have you at Atomic Church. But listen, if you're outside of the area, find yourself a great Bible-based, Bible-teaching, on-fire-for-God church. Go get plugged in there. Go, get, go, go serve there. Go let God minister to you there and get plugged in your local church. Get your Bible out, start reading your Bible, and you're gonna find out in the days to come that God's gonna do something so miraculous in your life it's gonna freak you completely out. It'll just be so awesome for you. So we're so glad for what you've done. Um, we are celebrating Easter today, so listen, go have a great day. Go be with your family. Don't go, um, don't go out, hang out in public, right? Not right now during the coronavirus 2020, right? Different kind of Easter this year. But we love you. We're praying for you. Have a great rest of your week here. God bless you.